Our mission is really about onboarding the masses through what we call the fiat on ramps uh, and the fiat um, uh, off ramps. Uh, we're actually the world's first exchange listed fintech PSP regtech company. Uh, think of us as the PayPal of the digital asset industry. And we're all about building the bridges between the fiat world and the digital asset world through what we call the, the picks and the shovels. Um, our business is B2B focused. It's highly regulated and low touch. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. There are four core things that we do as an organization. First of all, we aggregate a whole series of both global and local payment methods. We wrap that with our regulatory and compliance platform. Uh, we own multiple VASP virtual asset service provider licenses around the world. Um, and then that's all underpinned by point number three and four, which is our own proprietary technology stack that runs everything from data pricing payments to ultimately delivering the coin. We then simply wrap this up um, into an API or a widget, which is just another fancy name for a technical connection. And then we plug that into global crypto, crypto exchanges around the world. Um, this is a bit of an overview with regards to our TTV, total transaction value. Um, and we've got some really strong results coming out in December quarter, which I'll sort of talk about shortly. And very at a high level, um, about 45 million shares on issue, uh, 52 million uh, fully diluted. Um, and currently listed on three exchanges with the TSXV being our core exchange. And there's some research available on the company uh, as well, um, which you'll be able to, um, if you go to banks.com, you'll be able to download it. <clears throat> um, in terms of, let's call it some of the financial results and I'll just talk in US dollars um, as much as possible um, uh, with regards to this slide. So for the um, September quarter, um, TTB, one of the key metrics that we use in the business is total transaction value or TTV for short, um, up over 200% year on year um, at 182 million US with revenue of eight and a half million um, for that particular quarter. And our cash remains steady at just over 18 million US in cash and cash equivalents um, with an adjusted EBITDA loss of, of 1.2 or so I should say 0.8 million US and one of the other highlights, um, you know, partly financial, is that we added 17, one seven coins to our portfolio uh, for a total of 39 coins. Um, in terms of the revenue, this just provide this is taken from our MDNA, um, and so we've got some details. Um, you can download the the financial reports as well as the MDA uh, from uh, from CEDA um, and also from our website. And, uh, and I can talk more about this um, in, a, in a moment, but um, as you can see, revenues of 12 million Australian um, or just over 8 million uh, US dollars broken down into sale of cryptocurrencies or principal, basically off-ramping. Um, and the real driver, the real growth was people on-ramping in that particular quarter. Um, as those of you that may recall, um, in the September quarter, the only off-ramping available was for Australian dollars um, in, in Australia. Um, and, and I'll talk more about how we actually account for that revenue um, in a moment. Um, in terms of our GP, um, one of the, I guess, key metrics that a lot of people in the, in the industry use is the net take rate. Um, and, and the way that we sort of break this down is to take our, our TTV, um, revenue and then the GP, which is our, um, our stat results, uh, which you can see as our GP margin, and that's at 2.1%, which is basically in line with our expectations and was up on a year-on-year -year basis. Um, in terms of operating cash flow, um, we had negative operating cash flow of 4.2 million. Um, but you know uh, the best way to kind of really look at this is um, it was min it was minus four point two Aussie because we basically had um, you know three point nine million um, sitting with our liquidity providers or with the exchanges um, that we use in order to um, effectively buy all the coins. Um, so really, on a um, you know a, a true operating basis without the liquidity providers. You know, we would have been um, you know, slightly positive in that respect. And you'll also see there an increase in digital currency inventory of 439. Um, in terms of the EBITDA bridge and, and Constantine, feel free to, to jump in at any point. Our stat loss for the quarter was 1.2 million Aussie. Um, there was um, actually a, a gain 
um, on, um, uh, sorry, uh, let me just take a step back. Um, uh, there was actually, again, on, on some deposits that we actually had. Uh, and, um, and then obviously a number of share-based payments as well, which are a non-cash item. So, um, you know, really adjusted EBITDA was 1.1 1 .1, um, Australian or about 800K um, um, loss, um, EBITDA loss for, um, for that particular quarter. Um, uh, one of the other questions, and we also entered into a couple of short-term loan facilities. And, and let me just provide um, you know, the market with a, a bit of guidance and a bit, sort of bit of an understanding here. Um, you know, the business, so we as banks are operate on a T, typically on average, a T plus two basis. And, and what that basically means is when someone buys a coin from us um, through one of our partners, you know, like KuCoin or OKX or Binance, um, we basically need to procure that coin. So just say you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin today or now, um, we will be supplying that, we'll be buying that Bitcoin, we need to use our cash, and then we'll be sending you $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. Now, depending upon which provider we are using, um, it could be uh, one of the credit card, our upstream credit card provider, you know, MasterCard and Visa, they will typically settle in T plus two which is very typical for e-commerce type transactions, which normally settle around this particular time. Um, so as you can see, as the business grows um, in TTV, um, there basically becomes a requirement um, for working capital to fund that T plus two. Um, so as um, one of our the investment banks that we've worked with, uh, you know, their comment to me was, this is a, a champagne problem. It's a good problem to have in other words. Um, and so what we've done is basically put together a couple of short-term facilities um, while we look for longer-term um, uh, debt um, that we're currently working on. And I'd expect to announce something in the, in the new calendar year. Um, we basically had um, two related parties, and, and this has all been um, provided to and announced uh, to the market today um, of up to $6 million from two entities. Um, an entity which I control directly, which is Corroza Corporation, um, is basically providing it an interest rate of, of 10%. Um, Apollo Capital, which is also a related entity, but not really controlled because there are other shareholders and directors involved. Um, it's obviously at a much, much higher um, percentage of 30%. Just to be super clear, even though the facilities um, mature on the 30th of, of, um, 20, 30th of November, 2024, typically these facilities are typically only used for days. Um, so we will draw down if we have a, a major increasing volume, um, you know, let's call it this week, and we require some extra funding to fund the T plus two, um, we will typically take out a loan on short term, literally we'll, we'll call up the guys at Apollo or, or our, our, our CEO will, will ask me, we need the money um, you know, today. Um, the monies will be wired or, or sent across in stable coins. And, uh, and then, you know, when um, banks are gets paid, they'll get paid. So typically the, um, let's call it the, um, the, the term of these loans is typically much less than a week and hence the cost isn't really that material. Um, I just wanted to provide that because I've had a, a number of questions from shareholders with regards to this, but just to be super clear, we are working on a, you know, a, a much sort of longer term facility that grows as we grow as an organisation. Um, and, uh, and my view is at the same time, um, it's debt is also cheaper than equity. And, and uh, my view is, you know, there's no way that we're going to be raising any money. We don't need to raise any money um, with regards to the company. We've got, you know, $25 million of cash, cash in the bank. So hopefully that's addressed some of the, the um, questions from shareholders. Um, some of the other um, points that I just want to raise um, very, uh, very briefly is our key accounting policy. Um, and, and that is really around the whole notion of revenue recognition. Um, and as you can see in the accounts, there are two, two forms of revenue. There's principal revenue and there's agency revenue. Right now, the bulk of our revenue is what you call agency revenue is when we go um, fiat on ramping, someone basically buys a coin through one of our partners. And so we only account for a percentage of that particular revenue. While principal revenue, we need to account for um, 
100 percent of that revenue just to kind of illustrate that point if you bought a thousand dollars worth of bitcoin and our margins were, were gross margins were five percent under the agency model we would only book um, five percent of that particular revenue or fifty dollars um, and then obviously half of that roughly half of that would be our gross margin or our net revenue while under the principal basis if someone is off ramping and they're selling a coin and sending it into our wallet um, and because we effectively take control of that coin, it's a bit of an accounting nuance, we would account for $1,000 of that as revenue and then $950 as, as cost of sales. So hopefully I've provided a bit more colour around why you know, there's, a, I guess, a, a slight difference between agency and principal. And as we go along and provide financial accounts to uh, our shareholders, we're going to try and sort of unpack this and, and break it down um, so it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, so, so that's the um, sort of key questions. Now, if anyone has any questions, feel free. There's in Zoom, there's a chat box. So feel free to basically ask questions. Um, in terms of the business update, just to kind of give um, investors a, a bit of a, a sense of the business. Um, today, banks is available in over 100 different countries. And we ultimately make the process of going from fiat to crypto and then ultimately back again, really, really simple. And there are really three key reasons why we're winning business. One is we've actually got more ways to pay than many of our competitors put together. Um, so we have a, a wide range of payments, both in terms of credit card payments, uh, as well as local payments, like for example, Interact in Canada, um, ACH in the US, Poly in Australia. At the same time, um, having local payment methods also maximizes conversion rates uh, because um, our partners, our exchange partners and wallets are very keen on conversion rates. And we know that local payments ultimately offer a higher conversion rate. It's inevitable that a local payment method will always offer a higher conversion rate than credit card. And then, then thirdly, um, the other real value to our partners is that we offer zero fraud or zero chargeback risk. We actually take on that risk. Um, that's obviously part of our cost of doing business. Um, and, and that's, once again, some of the other reasons why we're able to, to win business. Um, in terms of comparables, um, um, even at the current price, our, uh, you know, our EV to revenue, uh, we're basically at around the five, five and a half mark. Um, and as you can see, the actual medium is about 15.2. Um, so this just gives you a bit of a snapshot with regards to the market. And this is, you know, one, and, you, and you'll see that most of these companies are actually NASDAQ listed. Um, or they've been listed for many, many years. And um, just to give investors context, um, this is our 11th month as a listed entity. Um, so we're really still the new kids on the block. And uh, in fact, from it, and I'm not, I know um, I always get questions with regards to, to NASDAQ. Um, we have um, you know, started that process, the NASDAQ process, and that we expect to be uplisted to NASDAQ early in the calendar year. Um, there's also a number of private company comparables, and this is really an example of sometimes private companies um, valuations outstripping public company valuations. And in fact, I was just talking uh, to an investor, an investor in banks so who's also investing in a number of private and um, public companies. And he's, he was actually just as astonished as I am in the delta between private and public company valuations. His view is at some point in time, it will come back to normality, but we're seeing you know, significant values in private companies. And once again, just to give you some context, Ramp, which is one of our competitors, which is effectively a startup in the space, who's only got not even a, you know, a single digit percentage of what we're doing in October. So last month, raised at a 300 million US valuation. And Moonpay, who's really, uh, in my view, more of a direct competitor to us, they've got roughly 2 billion of annualized transaction value. So we're only slightly smaller than them they just raised at a $3 billion valuation. So just, just to kind of let that sit in, and we're currently sitting in terms of US dollars, about 100, 110 million US dollar valuation. Um, in terms of moving forward, some of the key catalysts obviously focused on growing our TTV. Um, there's still significant opportunity and growth in building our B2B customer base, uh, as well as adding more licenses, adding more payment options, more coins. Like for example, we added 17 coins last quarter. Um, we will be adding many more coins 
this quarter and into the new year, as well as exploring significant opportunities in both DeFi and the NFT space. Um, so hopefully that's given investors a, a bit of an overview um, with regards to um, you know, the business. Um, now it'd be good to, uh, to try and uh, uh, get some questions through. Um, uh, Zafir asks, can you please provide some color around the partners? How do volumes ramp up over time with a partner? What does banks do to drive up the volume? Um, good, good, good question, Zafir. Um, it, it usually takes, once we've signed someone up and we've integrated them, um, and you can see this clearly in our Twitter feed, um, we actually will run promotions with our partners um, to basically promote the fact that Banksar is there as an on-ramp and, and in some cases an off-ramp partner uh, as well. And, uh, and so usually, you know, there is a, let's call it a gestation period. You don't just turn, turn it on and magically millions of dollars of TTV appear. It takes time um, to migrate a percentage of that customer base to actually using Banksar. Uh, but that's why part of our strategy is really focusing on the, on the major exchanges um, and increasing volume. And if you, you go, if you go to coinmarketcap.com, for example, um, and you just even look at the publicly available information, you'll see that we've got about a third of the top 30 exchanges listed there. Um, so that just tells you that there's still significant opportunity in terms of growth. Um, uh, Raya asks, um, can we expect big, big announcement or deal with backed or Coinbase before Christmas? It would be nice, <laughs> nice investor. Um, and thanks for the daily commitment. <laughs> Raya, thank you very much. Um, first of all, even if we did have a potential deal with backed or Coinbase, um, I wouldn't be in a position to actually tell you about it. Um, suffice to say, um, we are working on um, a number of, let's call it some of the other customer, some of the other potential prospects um, that aren't actually customers today. Um, so we actually are working on those and we've already had some feedback from some of the prospective customers on what do we need to do to um, modify our product or un I've spoken about unbundling part of our product um, to make it more attractive to some of these bigger groups. Um, all I can say is we are working with some of these um, big exchanges. Um, I can't tell you which ones, but you know, they're listed on, on coinmarketcap.com. And, um, you know, and as we announce them, we will basically make those announcements to the market. And, and once again, also to be clear, um, we do not announce every single deal that we've got, because frankly, if we did that, you know, we'd, we'd have an announcement every, every week or so. Um, so what we do is only announce the ones that we think are material, uh, but you'll see us on a, a quarterly basis or when we announce updates on a monthly basis, we'll talk about some of the key customers that we've acquired or the number of B2B customers that we've got. So today, just roughly, we've got about 88 zero B2B customers. The universe is thousands. So we've still got a long way to go in terms of growing the business. Um, Mr. Mayer asks, can you provide a projection as to when as to when investors can expect to see positive EBITDA? Um, uh, in fact, um, Mr. Mayer, for the last financial year, um, we generated a, a small um, uh, adjusted EBITDA profit of around a million dollars US. So we actually generated that. Um, but to be you know super clear, and the expectation is in the short term, any profits that we generate, we reinvest back into the business in order to grow the business. Because right now we are really in a land grab. And, and the best thing for us to do is to build out our sales team, build out our product capabilities, um, increasing the number of coins, the number of payment methods, uh, the number of VASP, the virtual asset service provider licenses that we have. Um, and my view is we are not in harvest mode today. When we're doing three or four billion transaction value a quarter, I think at that point we will be highly profitable. And, and that's ultimately as shareholders what we wanna to get to because that's, that's where the business should be able to generate SaaS style EBITDA margins and hopefully SaaS style um, multiples uh, from a market perspective. Okay, um, I think at that point we've got, uh, unless there's any sort of further questions, um, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for their time and uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me, dom at banks.com. You can follow me at Twitter, decarosa. Um, always 
trying to um, answer investor questions. And, um, and what I will say with regards to, and as we alluded to in the announcement, um, I, I can't tell you what the numbers are for the December quarter, or in fact, um, you know, the, the October results were 168 million, 160 odd million TTV, which was up 30%. Um, I can't tell you what November is. I know what the number is, but we, you'll have to wait for that. But all I'll say is the, tre the trend is continuing and uh, we're very, very pleased. And we, in fact, December is already a record. December quarter is already a record quarter for us. So we're, we're really pleased with the performance to date um, and really want to thank, you know, the board and, and, and the team he headed by our CEO, Holger. Um, you know, they're doing a, a fantastic job and uh, we really look forward to um, keeping shareholders updated. And all I say is watch this space. And once again, it's great to see so many um, you know, uh, shareholders um, on, this, uh, on this earnings webinar. So thanks everyone and uh, have a great day. Ciao.